World War I was considered the war to end all wars. Since then, many more wars have come and gone, and yet one could consider World War I the last war, in a way. This war would prove to be the last time that the old ideologies of Europe would clash, and the last time monarchies would reign. For those who won and lost, old ideas gave way to new ones. The nation that arguably both caused the war and was most affected by its outcome was the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and yet, despite being a great power at the time, it has largely been forgotten in today's society. In this video, we will take a look at what this empire was, why it fell, and how, or even if, it could have been saved. I'm your host, Steam Shadow, and welcome to another episode of A Pony Perspective. <laughs> Our story begins at the dawn of the 19th century as Europe was in chaos due to the Napoleonic Wars. Francis II, the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire and leader of the Habsburg monarchy, saw both begin to fall apart as the threat from Napoleon loomed. Determined to save his dynasty, he carved out a territory in Central Europe comprising of lands from both the Holy Roman Empire and the Habsburg monarchy called it the Austrian Empire, and proclaimed himself emperor in 1804. After losing several wars to Napoleon, Austria joined the War of the Sixth Coalition, which pitted most of Europe against Napoleon, resulting in the defeat of the Napoleonic Empire. During the subsequent Council of Vienna in 1814, Clemens von Metternich, the chief architect of said council, ensured Austria was the chief beneficiary in this new European order. However, although defeated, Napoleon left something behind in the minds of all Europeans that would dominate Europe for the next century. Nationalism. This idea would grow throughout the 19th century as different ethnic groups desired their own nations. Considering Austria was comprised of over 12 ethnic groups, nationalism would prove to be the greatest threat to its survival during its existence. For the next 35 years, Austrian ministers, with their hard enforcement of conservative views, managed to maintain the status quo within the empire. However, from 1859 to 1866, Austria lost wars to France, Italy, and Prussia. With its weakening strength and power and increasing internal unrest, the Austrians had to do something to retain the status of a great power. To solve this problem, Austria reconciled with the Hungarians, the most vocal of all the nationalities, in order to gain their support. The following Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867 created a dual monarchy. In other words, it created two separate political entities, the Kingdom of Hungary and the Empire of Austria, united together by a constitutional union under the Habsburg monarch to form the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This new empire was by all means a great power, but one plagued with problems. Stresses regarding nationalism were still building up, as only two groups, the Germans and the Hungarians, held any real power. In addition, the two halves of the empire frequently fought with each other more than they cooperated. As industrialization spread through the empire in the last quarter of the 19th century, new ideas and competing interests among capitalists, the political elite, and the national minorities only served to inflame tensions. At the same time, nationalism was tearing apart the Ottoman Empire as it lost most of its possessions in the Balkans, leading to the creation of several new nations. The problem was that some of these people were also minorities within Austria-Hungary. Needless to say, these people wanted to leave the empire and join their ethnic brothers in these new nations. As the Ottomans were retreating from the Balkans, the Austrians and Russians saw the opportunity to expand into this region. While Russia wanted to protect the Slavs and Orthodox Christians, Austria wanted to create a multi-ethnic, religiously diverse empire under Vienna's control. Considering they could barely control their current empire as it was, taking on more territory was a rather bad decision. Through political maneuvering, they did manage to occupy Bosnia and Herzegovina. With all of the political change going on in the region, the Balkans remained a site of political unrest and became the powder keg of Europe. Anxious about Balkan instability and Russian aggression, Austria-Hungary forged a defensive alliance with Germany in October of 1879. After formally annexing Bosnia and Herzegovina in 1908, Austria contemplated creating a tri-monarchy with Slavs as a third component. 
time for the shot that screwed history. On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, visited the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. Long story short, Gavrilo Princip, a member of a Serbian nationalist group supplied by the Black Hand, shot and killed him and his wife. This gave Austria-Hungary justification for an invasion of Serbia, both of whom hated each other. This in turn led to Austria invading Serbia, which resulted in World War I. For a more in-depth explanation about all of this, watch my very first video, which I will link below. As for the war itself, Austria was wholly unprepared to fight a continental war in almost every way. They performed so badly that they often needed the assistance of Germany to prevent total disaster. This led Germans feeling like they were shackled to a corpse. After four long years of fighting, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy collapsed as it became apparent they would lose the war. The minority seceded from the empire and formed their own nations. Despite efforts of both governments to save themselves, the Austro-Hungarian empire was officially dissolved on October 31st, 1918. To sum up the situation, Austria-Hungary was a great power, but it contained a large number of ethnic groups that sought their own nation. It was ruled by a coalition of two powerful minorities, the Germans and the Hungarians. Stresses regarding nationalism were building up, and the severe shock of a poorly handled war caused the system to collapse. Thus, Austria had taken its last bow and left the world stage forever. And yet, for the sake of argument, Let's roll back the hands of time to June 28th, 1914. What if Archduke Franz Ferdinand wasn't assassinated? Could the empire have survived? To answer that question, we must not look far, for the Austrians had a radical plan to save their empire before the war ever happened. The idea was called... Okay, I can't pronounce that. In English, this translates to the United States of Greater Austria. The idea was developed in 1906 by lawyer and politician Arl Papavici. The plan aimed at federalizing Austria-Hungary to help resolve widespread ethnic and nationalist tensions. More specifically, the great origin, language, customs, and mentality diversity of different nationalities requires, for the whole empire of the Habsburgs, a certain state form which can guarantee that not a single nationality will be threatened, obstructed, or offended in its national political life, in its private development, in its national pride, in one word, in its way of feeling and living. In order to achieve this goal, the empire would be broken up into a number of ethnically and linguistically dominated semi-autonomous states that would all be part of a larger confederation renamed the USGA. The USGA would consist of 15 states based on nationality. I would name each state, but I can't pronounce them. Just look at the map. Back to the point. Language and cultural identification were to be encouraged, and the disproportionate balance of power would be corrected. The major proponent of this plan was none other than Archduke Franz Ferdinand himself, a man who was outspoken about his criticism of the current system and the need to reform it. However, could this government have ever been established? And if so, could it have lasted? Well, let's run a scenario. In this scenario, I will give Austria the best possibility for survival based on events that could have happened based on my research. To start off this scenario, I will change but one small thing. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was not assassinated in Sarajevo. Simple enough, I guess. Let's begin. After Archduke Franz Ferdinand's uneventful trip to Sarajevo in 1914, events in Europe remain relatively the same for the next two years. Things change in 1916 when Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria-Hungary dies. Archduke Franz Ferdinand then assumes the throne. Disgusted at the dual monarchy, Franz Ferdinand starts planning to create the United States of Greater Austria. However, Hungary refuses to let this happen, unwilling to give up any power. In 1918, they declare their independence and secede. This results in a civil war between Austria and Hungary. Sensing an opportunity to further weaken the Austrians and gain land, Romania and Serbia join Hungary in a war against Austria. Austria, in turn, pleads with Germany, who quickly joins the war to defend her ally. With Germany's might, the two proceed to kick the crap out of Hungary, Romania, and Serbia. At this point, Bulgaria would join Austria and Germany in order to reclaim land they see as historically Bulgarian. Seeing all of this, however, Russia declares war on Germany and Austria in order to protect its little Slavic brothers. Since Germany already has troops heavily invested in the Balkans, 
they realize their Schlieffen plan, in which they would attack France first, is null and void. Thus, by not attacking France through Belgium and thus angering Britain, the Germans managed to diplomatically keep both France and Britain out of the ensuing conflict. They then throw all their might at Russia, with the combined German and Austrian forces under the military competency of the German High Command, they easily defeat Russia, Hungary, Romania, and Serbia. The war formally ends in 1921. In the following treaty with Russia, Germany would treat Russia much the same way they did in World War I with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. In this similar treaty, Germany would create independent states in the Baltic, Poland, the Ukraine, and the Crimea under German and or Austrian control. Bulgaria would annex parts of Serbia and Romania. Hungary is annexed back into Austria. With the country under the firm grip of the military, Franz Ferdinand uses the moment to formally establish the USGA with himself still the emperor, and the minorities would be given the autonomy that they would certainly demand. Austria would create puppet states out of Albania, Montenegro, what was left of Serbia, and Romania. In these treaties, the Russian Empire is neutered as large areas of land, population, and resources became German and Austrian. The troublesome Balkans would be firmly under the control of the USGA, Germany, and Bulgaria. As for Britain and France, they are outraged, but at most, they would use their influence to curtail the success of Germany and Austria to some degree. But that is inconsequential for this scenario. Could they have attacked? It's entirely possible, but that is a scenario for another day. In the end, the war would not be easy for Austria. She would be battered and bloody. However, she would win the war. More importantly, she would continue to exist as a nation, even if it was in a different form. And that was the purpose of this scenario. Could Austria have convinced Hungary to form the USGA peacefully? Given my research, this is very unlikely. Even if it was, it would have made for a boring scenario. Regardless, now that her immediate future was secured, could this new system have lasted? That question hinges on two major issues. First, the Habsburg monarchy would have to change and adapt in order to effectively rule this new confederation in this new age. Given the monarchy's conservative history, this would certainly be a challenge, but not necessarily impossible. However, the even more important issue would be how effective the new government would be in quelling nationalist tensions. Certainly, the new government would alleviate immediate problems. In terms of the long run through, I simply can't say. In order for the Confederation to survive indefinitely, it would have to not only give the sensation of support, but it should become the genuine, and more than that, the only support for all these peoples. In other words, the government would have to convince the various ethnic groups that being a part of the Confederation was in their best interest. However, with so many internal and external factors affecting the nationalist ideas and tensions, the new government would have to overcome enormous challenges to achieve this goal. What the outcome of this game would be, we will simply never know. However, what do you think? Could the monarchy have survived in any form, or was it doomed to be condemned to merely a footnote in history? Did my scenario give Austria the best shot of survival, or is there a better scenario? Please leave your thoughts and comments below. As always, I will try to give an unbiased representation of history. But after all, I am just a pony. This is Steam Shadow, signing off.